How y'all doing? Welcome to another episode of, of Bourbon with a Taste of Military History. I'm Clem, your host, and um, we're going to go ahead and, and do another episode. We're going to review a very fine bourbon out of Kansas, and we're going to talk about an American Indian battle with the U.S. Cavalry that happened on June 17th, 1876. It's called the Battle of Rosebud. We're going to talk about a bourbon out of Lieksa, Kansas, called Union Horse, and it's from Union Horse Distillery Company. And it's a pretty darn good uh, local thing from Kansas. I was just in Kansas last week, and I have another bottle here of their rye, and that's what I'm drinking right now. Talk about Union Horse. So uh, it's a small batch artisanal whiskey made from sour mash recipe of corn and rye. Yeah, it's distilled in a copper pot still. It's barreled at a proof of 110 and aged up to five years in New Missouri oak. I love New Missouri oak um, barrels. One of my favorite wines of all time comes from a winery in Napa called Del Dotto. And they do a very nice Cabernet that's only, normally wine guys are, they do all their um, barely, they let their wine age in French oak. But they have a special one where they do a, a Missouri oak. And um, I'm telling you, it's, it's ex excellent wine if you ever drink it. But yeah, so this is the Missouri oak. Uh, and each barrel selected is uh, by the artisan to, and blended to taste. Reserve is a subtle reminder that some things are best enjoyed slowly. It's 92 proof, which is a little bit below my proof level. You know, you know, we've talked about this before. I'm a 100 plus proof guy. Um, the rye, yeah, well over that. And I can tell you next when we do the review on the rye, I'll tell you a story about it. Non-chill filtered. Each bottle is hand numbered and signed by the master distiller and co-founder Patrick Garcia. Uh, Patrick, Mr. Garcia, excellent bourbon. You're doing a great job. Keep at it. Next time I'm in the Kansas City area, I'm coming by your distillery. Uh, it's got a creamy vanilla, maple, nougat, which I don't know, what is nougat? I'm going to have to look up on the internet machine and find out what nougat is. And a light smoke. Our shy, relaxed family horse chrome. So, um, let's, I'm going to put the rye aside for right now. But I'm going to have to finish that before we get to the next portion of this. And we're going to pour a little bit of this here and see, if we, see what we get. See what Clem's non-trained nose can, can find. So we'll pour a little bit in there. There we go. That's good like that. So I hope you enjoyed my last video with um, Beth and Mallory and the Battle of Gela uh, and the Devil's River. Um, Devil's River is good bourbon. Uh, the Battle of Gela intrigued me. I, you know, I, I, uh, I know Beth was very excited to be able to talk about her grandfather, who was a, a, a stud superhero, um, you know, one of those guys, you know, that the reason we could sleep safely at night times is because he went over there and did what he did. I uh, really let, would have liked to have met him. So um, good stuff. So if you get a chance, you know, you need to watch that. So let's see. Here we go. I like the dark color. Um, I seem to be drifting more toward bourbons that have a darker color to them. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, it's just something that I'm starting to do. Uh, and, you know, this, this, you're supposed to do something like that, and I don't, you know. Okay, I love to open my mouth and try to breathe. That's hard to do. Um, but I did smell the vanilla, and I'm, I'm not sure that's because I already know there's a vanilla smell there, but I, I can also smell the maple. I can't tell you if I smell nougat because I thought nougat wasn't a candy bar, but I could be wrong. Uh, and I'm not really getting the light smoke. But you can definitely smell a little bit sweeter than um, normal. You're not getting an alcoholically um, taste with it. It's definitely a sweeter smell. I kind of like it a little bit better. But let's see how the most important thing is how does it taste. Ooh, okay, whoa. Dang. Went in smooth, and then like almost instantly I got a bite in my upper part of my mouth. But it went in, and then it disappeared. I'm not tasting it as it's going down. It's not warming me up. I'm not getting a huge hug from it, like we would call it maybe. Maybe it's because I didn't drink enough. Let's try a little bit heavier drink of it. Wow. 
Here we go. All right. Here we go. Still losing it though after you after it goes through your mouth. Um, it's not. I'm not feeling it down here. That's not a bad thing. And don't don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. You know there are some bourbons that will 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 you know envelop you and hug you all the way down, and that's a good thing. But then there's also uh, good bourbons that that don't do that. Not everything is designed to exactly the same. That's why we have 1,500 plus different type bourbons out there right now. I mean, each one has got a unique and different taste and the way it goes down and all that. And, and Union Horse here is um, an excellent tasting bourbon. It's just, it's not doing that and that's fine. That's fine. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, okay, so there you go. Union Horse out of Can out of Leexa, Kansas. Let's see. Let's let me go on here a little bit and let's talk a little bit about them. And it says they started their company with an idea of bringing something unique and special to their hometown. Um, uh, it's a backbone of our family, their team, and their process. It's a collective energy that flows from both Kansas and Missouri. If you ever been to Kansas City, it's pretty cool. It's a neat city. I was just there last weekend for a wedding shower, and it's a neat city. I mean. One minute we're in Kansas City, Missouri, the next minute we're in Kansas City, Kansas. You know, it's just back and forth, back and forth, and I think that it works for them really well. It's the locally sourced ingredients with their commitment to the craft and culmination in award-winning, nationally acclaimed small batch spirits. They mill Midwest grains, and everything's done in-house and by hand, which I like. So, if you get a chance, next time you're in the Kansas City area, go on over to Le Leexa, I don't think I'm saying that right, Kansas. And, and visit Union Horse Distillery. Uh, I think you'll be well pleased. I want to say I spent forty some dollars for this bottle. Um, I know I spent. Excuse me. I know I just spent fifty on this rye um, at, at, a, at, a, at a liquor store in Kansas. I have not been able to find this in Arkansas yet. Uh, I wish it was here. It's a good uh, good bourbon. I think it would, you guys would like to, to drink it every day. And um, uh, let's let's clap our hands big time for Union Horse and for them putting out a wonderful, wonderful bourbon. Okay, so we're going to talk about the Battle of Rosebud, June 17th, 1876, prelude to the Little Bighorn. So I'm going to get on my internet here. We're going to go to the um, website for Rose, the Battle of Rosebud and, uh, and talk a little bit about it. Uh, not a huge battle um, by any means, but I don't really think you know, any of the uh, American Indian battles were huge in, 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 in size. But I will say, I want to say that there was three or 4,000 Indians versing a light number of, of cavalrymen. So um, let's here get on here real quick. Battle of Rosebud. I really wish, um, I took a class in college uh, my sophomore year. I'm a history guy at college. And uh, it was U.S. History to 1865, um, which would have been a lot of prelude to the American Indian Wars. I, I didn't do well, as well in that class as I should have, and I think it had a lot to do with the professor. Uh, him and I never got along at all. But um, I wish I'd have spent more time uh, researching the American Indian Wars. And um, I have a plan to... Um, eventually go up and look at some of these battlefields. You know, I'm a battlefield guy, I like to go to them. And I have not been to a lot of American Indian battlefields. You know, of course, everybody thinks about, you know, the Custer's Last Stand at the Bighorn, um, or, you know, Fort Apache with John Wayne and stuff like that. And that's what I used to think. But there's all kinds of minor engagements that have happened between the American Indians and the U.S. Cavalry over the time, you know, that were important and helped shape our nation for the way it is today. So. This, the Battle of Rosebud took place on June 17, 1876, in the Montana Territory between the United States Army and its Crow and Shoshone allies against a force consisting mostly of Lakota Sioux and Northern Cheyenne Indians during the Great Sioux War of 1876. So let's go here. You know, the Internet is a wonderful thing. We were talking today at track practice, I coach track, about telephones in our rooms uh, in college, you know, when we went to college, and 
I said, you know, telephone in your room, we had a pay phone in the hallway. So in the internet, we, there's no such thing back then. We had a library with books. Um, but you know, the internet is extremely important, a very, very huge um, thing. So it's also the Battle of Rosebud Creek. Um, the Cheyenne called it the battle where the girl saved her brother. And that's a, if you ever read one of these books, and we'll talk about this book later on, it's about a, a girl that went out and grabbed her brother during the middle of the battle. Uh, it, it's a fight involving Buffalo Calf Road women. General George Crook offensive was stymied by the Indians led by Crazy Horse. And he awaited reinforcements from resuming the campaign in August. So, um, In 1876, the U.S. military renewed its fight with a three-pronged invasion of the Bighorn and Powder River. Now, when we talk about this battle being the prelude to um, the Little Bighorn, and it really was, the, the U.S. Army had decided that they were going to move on the American Indians, and they were going to hit it three different ways. And this is one of the ways General Crooks met these Indians at the Battle of Rosebud. And... Um, he was not able to take the offensive. He actually held back after the initial, I think the battle lasted for a day or so of constant fighting back and forth. Casualties were very, very little. Um, it's on the South Fork of the Rosebud Creek. Um, the Indian scouts arrived and the uh, battle would last for six hours and consisted of disconnected action and charges and counter charges by Crook and Crazy Horse. The two forces spread out over a fluid front three miles wide. I and mean, I don't know how you can control a battle three miles wide without communications. I mean, you know, in the military now, oh, look at my buddy Boomer's here. In the, in the um, you know, now we just pick up a radio, three miles is no big deal because we're talking on the radio. You know, we've got video with drones and all that kind of stuff like that. But back then, you know, if General Crook wanted to talk to one of his units that was a mile away, he had to send a guy on a horse with a message to do that. Kind of hard to do in a battle. I'm telling you, this ride is really good, but i got to finish it before we do what we're going to do with this. Uh, Crook initially directed his forces to seize the high ground north and south of the Rosebud Creek. He ordered Captain Van Villette with two troops of his 3rd Cavalry to occupy the high bluff south of the creek to guard against an Indian attack from that direction. In the north, it commands the Major Chambers with two companies of the 4th Infantry and three companies of the 9th Infantry. And Captain Noyes with three troops of the 2nd Cavalry formed a dismounted skirmish line and advanced toward the Lakota. Progress was slow due to flanking, flanking fire from the Indians occupying the high grounds in the northeast. So they went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Bottom line, is, is that during this battle, you know, the Union, the American soldiers were able to eventually push the Indians off, and Crook did not seize the initiative and, and follow them and continue the attack. Now, it could be said, you know, that this actually led to Custer's downfall, because had Crook followed these and, and sent messages to the other two prongs, there's a good possibility this um, Custer's last stand would never have happened and um, they would have fought this battle at a different place than the Bighorn. So, um, estimates of the casualties by both the soldiers these were very wily. Crook said he had 10 killed and 21 wounded. Uh, add that four of the wounds were mortal and gave total casualties to 57. Um, somebody else said there was 28 soldiers killed and 56 wounded. Estimates of the Crow killed range from one to five, Shoshone from one to eight. The Lakota and Cheyenne casualties are likewise uncertain, with estimates of the number of killed ranging from 10 to 100. Um, the Crow reportedly took 13 scalps. Uh, Kirk claimed victory by virtue of occupying the battlefield at the end of the day. You know, the Indians didn't care about occupying the battlefield. Uh, but his action Belias can claim. Concerned for his wounded and short on supplies, he retraced his steps to his camp on, Gross Creek, on Goose Creek near Sheridan, Wyoming, and remained there immobile for seven weeks awaiting reinforcements. He would play no role in the Battle of the Little Bighorn eight days later. I ain't going to go into that. Uh, that's not what we're here for. We're not going to discuss crooks, what happened, why Custer did what a Custer did, and all that. We're just here to, to drink good bourbon and talk about that kind of stuff. So, um, 
that's pretty much it. Uh, Battle Rosebud Creek. Uh, if you ever get out to the Montana territories, I suggest you go by, go by and, and check it out. Um, don't just go to Custer's Big Little Bighorn and see there. I think that the um, you should go ahead and follow some of these minor battles that happened before. You know, you get to um, the Bighorn and understand why the Bighorn happened, and what happened, why it did. Um, Union Horse Bourbon, excellent. Excellent. Good buy. If you can find it, please go out and get it. Um, tell people at Union Horse that Clem with his bourbon channel, bourbon with a taste of military history, loves it, and that they should send me copious amounts of bottles so I can hand them out to all my friends. Well, I think that's it. Um, thanks again. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We have not talked about a book. Okay, Rosebud, June 17, 1876. Prelude to Little, ba Little Bighorn, written by Paul L. Hedrick. Great book. It's by the Oklahoma Press and the Great Sioux War. I'm going to follow this, go to a bunch of battlefields next, as soon as I can. And until the next time, please keep drinking bourbon and keep drinking whatever you like. Hey, the dog's inside, so obviously there's nothing in the woodpile. Till next time, keep drinking bourbon. Thank you.